Let's, uh, let's go ahead and move on. We're going to talk a little college basketball today. Um, let, let's talk about some of the big topics that have happened over the weekend. Topic number one, uh, for the first time since 2006, Duke lost two straight as a top five team uh, after their loss to Louisville at home on Saturday night, and they lost at Clemson in the middle of last week. Uh, if you look at Bracket Matrix... And and they are they've got just a ton of different you know bracket experts or whatever that you know they they round them all up and they average everything out. Baylor is your number one overall seed. Kansas is a number one seed. Duke is a number one seed, and Gonzaga is a number one seed. Duke is still considered a number one seed even after these two losses. And if you look at Ken Palm numbers, if you look at efficiency metrics, all that kind of mess, Duke is still one of the top teams, but they got to get off the slide. Uh, they do face Miami on Tuesday night, so we'll see if they can uh, if they can get over that. They face them um, at home, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, your two seeds right now are Butler, San Diego State, West Virginia, and Florida State. And then you've got Dayton, Oregon, Auburn, and Michigan State as your three seeds. How insane is it that you see names like Baylor, you know, Gonzaga, Duke, Kansas, totally normal one seeds, but Baylor is a one seed is weird. And you've got Butler, San Diego State, West Virginia, and Florida State as two seeds. Like I think to the all, average, all that's going to change fans, so much between now and and tournament time. Yes, but the fact that those guys have come out and done what they have done so far, uh, it, I think the average college basketball fan would not believe you if you told them that that was what the the two seeds were in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, no, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, Kentucky got a big win over Arkansas. They moved to uh, thirteen and four. And people wouldn't think that that's a, a big win, but Kentucky lost to South Carolina on the road on a last-second shot in the middle of last week. And they were actually an underdog in that game to Arkansas. Arkansas only has uh, two losses, or well, now three losses on three. the season. Um, Arkansas has done pretty well under uh, uh, Musselman. I mean, he's, yep. like, he's done fantastic so far. The, uh, the other big topic was Auburn. Auburn opened up the season 15-0. Uh, they didn't have a single Quadrant 1 game, much less a win, uh, in their first 15 games. Their schedule was really, really light, and they went on the road and lost at Alabama and at Florida by 20-plus points in each. That was shocking that, that they got beat as handily as they did in both of those games. Uh, the Tuesday night big games, of course, are going to be Florida LSU, Texas Tech at TCU, and then Butler at Villanova. Florida LSU is not a top 25 game, but Florida 12-5 and coming off of a pretty big win over Auburn, and LSU is still undefeated in SEC play. Um, yep. I know that you are an LSU fan, not so much college basketball, but... Oh, no, I follow the basketball team. We follow yeah. all their sports. Uh, is it... So, coming from you as a, as a fan... Is it weird to you to still see uh, Smart and some of those guys playing for LSU and still seeing Will Wade on the sideline, even after no, all the FBI? Not stuff? at all. Not at all. If I, was, if I was the athletic director for any of these schools, I'd be doing the exact same thing. Bruce Pearl's going nowhere until the NCAA does something. I'm not going to I'm not gonna self-inflict pain on my own team when, at the end of the day, if they do an investigation and they find out something happened at LSU on this date, they're still going to punish you. That's a good so point. So they're, they're going to if if the NCAA two years from now comes and they say, "Hey, last year in 2018, you did this," and so therefore we're going to bring this punishment down four years later, th then why am I going to hurt myself the three or four years between that? That's a good point. That's a good they're point. not going to make it extra hard because we kept those guys. Uh, Texas Tech TCU interesting game. Uh, it should be relatively close. Jamie Dixon has done a good job at TCU since he got there from Pitt. Uh, he really has. He he yeah. really has done done a good job at TCU. The Big Twelve basketball has gotten substantially better. SEC basketball has gotten substantially better oh, yeah. over the last couple of years. Chris Beard had, at Texas Tech uh, not as good this year as they were last year, and that's lost a lot of talent. Yeah, lost a ton of it, just seniors and NBA talent, et cetera. Just athletes, um, man. They were the they were the most athletic team in the in the tournament last year. Oh yeah, one of the most athletic teams in the tournament Which last is, year. And I, I don't know that they had a single four star on the roster. <laughs> like, you know, but they were that. That's because people who grade stars on on these things just aren't always. Good at what they do. 
Well, I, I look at it more as Chris Beard as a head coach is remarkable. I yes. think he's incredible. You know, um, Butler and Villanova, uh, if you had told me before the season started that these two teams with what they were losing and, and all that kind of mess, that they would be two top 15 teams, uh, Villanova may be top 10 by the time, you know, this podcast comes out. Uh, but Butler, I mean, good gracious. Like, they, they lose Brad Stevens to the NBA. They lose Chris Holtzman to Ohio State. And they just keep rolling. Like, it doesn't matter who the coach is, it doesn't feel like. So, yeah, Butler, uh, that's going to be very interesting. And, of course, we talked about all the bracket matrix stuff. We'll, uh, we'll continue to talk college basketball throughout the season. We, uh, I think once we get towards doing some weekend stuff, we might do some picks on Saturdays. Uh, if you go over to winningcureseverything.com and go to the gambling pick section, I bet college basketball games every single day. I am sitting at 58.5% on the season. Uh, a five dollar better would have made if you bet every single game, which I don't expect you to, but um, but I bet all these games. And if you bet five bucks, you would be up over hundred. If you bet ten bucks each game, like me, you'd be up over two hundred dollars right now. So uh, if you want to go check those out, see what I'm doing on the season, winningcureseverything.com. Go to the gambling pick section. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.